And this is the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame show on a night where the expected carryover never carried. Six goals in the third period on Thursday. Nothing in the third period tonight. Nothing in the first either. Welcome inside our Delta MSG studios. John Giannone alongside Steve Valaket. 2-1 the final. Rangers lose in Nashville. The numerical imbalance is stark when you consider the shots on goal 35-18. to 18. The shot attempts 72-44, to 44, both favoring the Rangers, but in the scoreboard where it matters most, 2-1 Nashville. You know how we assessed the loss to the Islanders on Tuesday. We tried not to allow our emotions to cloud our judgment, and I feel it's the same thing here tonight. It's, it's a similar game. Uh, the Rangers outplayed Nashville, and, and they lost in similar fashion to how they lost on Tuesday against the Islanders. You, you know, once again, you replay this game. Uh, Soros is a star in the game again. That's the sixth time a goaltender has stepped up and been one of the game's first three stars against the Rangers in 16 games. He played great. Give it to him. Um, there were a lot of unlucky moments. When you think about Trocek blocking accidentally one of the goals mm -hmm. that was going to end up in the back of the net, he was trying to get out of the way, and there was a few others, crossbar from Trocek as well, uh, one that slid off Soros' leg. Now, the players, trust me, they don't, they don't think that way. They're not, I'm just going over the game here. Um, a lot of open nets missed, a lot of open looks for shots from the slot in the third period. That's one where I, I'd be a little bit, upset about that if I'm Gallant. The power play, not good. Mm -hmm. And the Rangers haven't been able to establish themselves against power, power play against a penalty goal that's been aggressive. And that's been since the San Jose game. And I thought that was, if there's one thing that you really look at here that didn't help you in this game, it's, it's being on the power play and not being able to get one. So again, you're trying to assess this and you're saying like, we're playing pretty well here, why aren't we winning? And, and why are goalies coming up hot against us? But, you know, the Rangers on Tuesday, 40 shots against the Islanders and lose. And here in Nashville on a Saturday with 35 shots to 18. And I don't know. I mean, it's, it's been that kind of a season so far, John. It's nothing like we saw last year. Eight goals on Thursday night in Detroit, just one tonight. Rangers found themselves behind less than five minutes in. And a guy named Yuso Parsonen <laughs> playing in his NHL First game, NHL debut, it was his second shot attempt of his career. It was uh -huh. the second shift he ever took. Found himself up one-on-one -on -one against uh, Alexi Lafreniere down the right side and was able to beat Yaro Halak. Worst thing a goalie can ever hear when the goal is being announced after it's being scored on you is <laughs> for the first goal of the year for this player. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, my God, another guy, first goal? All right, but here's the thing. It's transition again. It's hurt the Rangers this year. They rank 22nd in transition rush chances against. And, and that's one that kills you because we talked about this in the pregame. You can't defend. You are chasing the play, and you've got wrong people back. And Lafreniere, you don't want him back there defending, but it's an ill-advised pinch, and Miller gets caught. It's hard for Truba to help out here, and it's a low-danger goal against. Uh, same idea on the second goal, John. It's, it's a play that you want Goche to stop here and make sure it gets out. Stay between the man and your net, but he's looking for offense, and this is... He's not the only Ranger that's been guilty of this in recent weeks. It's looking for offense when you should be thinking about defense, and it really hurts the overall scope of how you're able to then muscle back and protect the front of your net. It's an east to west play, and look, if I was coaching Nashville, I would say that if the Rangers are looking for offense when they're in their defensive zone, it's east to west immediately after a turnover. So we just heard Trocek use the term cheating. Is that precisely what he's talking That's about? That's precisely yeah. what it is. Yeah. Uh, look, guys are looking for breaks. Goche's got a lot of speed. I understand he's playing up in the lineup and he wants to have an impact and he wants to get an open look. He wants a free breakaway there, but it it's just not the time. It's not the time in a game that was played tight. And, you know, again, if you're looking for offense in the defensive zone, you're always, that's how goals, if you watch every NHL goal that is scored tonight on the highlights tomorrow morning, you'll see a lot of plays that look just like that. Rangers outshot Nashville 11 to 4 in the first, 16 to 7 in the second. That Jankowski goal made it 2 nothing. Just a couple minutes later, the Rangers got their only goal of the night. Let's go inside the CDW film room and see how Philip Heedle scored his fourth of the year. Uh, I like the fact that he's finding open ice the way he is, John. And, and the Rangers have done really well at being able to establish themselves to get one-timers from the same side of the ice. Now, part of the reason why this works is because Fox always adds value when he gets down the ice, and, and now Soros is forced to go down. He's not a big guy, but for Heedle to have the know-how and the skill work and the footwork to get away from the net, he pulls himself 
32 and a half feet away from the net. That allows him now to elevate the puck. That vertical angle can get off the pad of Soros. And this is where a lot of goals are, are made. It's always about the player that is helping themselves be a better target. And, and getting tighter to the net there, it isn't the right play for Hedl. He understands that. We've seen this a lot from him. And, and the more characteristics I see in his game really lend me to believe that he's going to continue to score because he knows how to give himself the opportunity to elevate the puck from distance. Uh, he, that's three times that he scored one-timers from distance this year. I love what the kid's doing. He's doing the right stuff to be able to have some long-term success. 